Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about logistic regression. I'm Gus and this is Endless Engineering, so let's dive right in. Okay, so logistic regression is a statistical algorithm that allows us to predict the probability that a given, uh, that a dependent variable uh, is of a certain category, say a uh, cat, uh, given an input and a certain model, right? So say I have a bunch of inputs. Say these are the dependent, the independent variables uh, x and the dependent variable y. And uh, let's say these are images. Now I'm displaying those in 2D as, da as one data point just in order to make, to make the case for what is logistic regression. But let's just say this is an image and this image is clearly an image of a cat or clearly an image of a dog. These are categories, uh, so zero and one. Right? So this becomes a classification problem. And a classification problem is the ability to predict a certain input having the certain type or a certain class. And that's what logistic regression does for us. It's a classification algorithm to find the probability that given us input uh, and I have a certain model, that that input belongs to a certain category. So how do I do that? Now I could say that uh, I want to use a hypothesis uh, similar to uh, linear regression, right? Where I have theta transpose and x bar. You can go back and watch my video on linear regression and see what that means. Where I have theta transpose is the row vector of theta 0, theta 1, all the way to theta n. And x bar is at 1, starts with 1, and then goes to x0 all the way to xn transpose column vector. Right? So if I do that, I could then fit this data with something that looks like this. Right? But if I want to find the probability of this value, then it can't be um, that I use a line because this line can have a value larger than 1 and less than 0. And that violates the definition of a probability. So what do I do? I make my hypothesis h of x equal to some function sigma of theta transpose x bar. And that function that I pick here is a sigmoid function, which is equal to one, plus, 1 over 1 plus e to the, min, to the negative minus theta transpose x. And the reason why I pick the sigmoid is twofold. The first is that the sigmoid looks something like this. It starts at 0, then it ramps up to 1. Right? That's what a sigmoid looks like. So it's squashed here and here. Now technically uh, it goes around zero, so like the zero axis would be here, but the idea here being is that the sigmoid function cannot be larger than one, no matter what the input is, or less than zero. So that's the first reason. The second reason is that the derivative of a sigmoid is mathematically convenient, and we'll find that out later in just a few minutes. However, here, that's my hypothesis, right? This is the hypothesis that I can find the probability of yi, one sample, is equal to cat, given xi, parameterized by theta, is equal to 1 over 1 plus e to the minus theta transpose x, right? So the reason why the notation I'm using here is that the probability of y conditioned, so given by, this, this bar means given, xi, and I'm putting the semicolon here because theta is not really a random variable. Theta is a parameter that we need to find. And also my probability that yi is not a cat, or in this case it's a dog, given xi parameterized by theta, is going to be 1 minus this probability. So 1 minus h of theta of, of x, right? Now I don't want to say theta transpose x, so don't confuse um, h with sigma. So h itself is sigma theta transpose x, and that's the probability that I have one class given the input and parameterized by theta. And the other probability is the probability that I'm not of that class, or I'm of different class. Uh, I get that. And I can combine those two in one equation, and I can say that the probability of yi given xi parameterized by theta is equal to uh, the, prob the probability itself of hx to the power of yi, so hxi, uh, times uh, 1 minus hxi 
to the power of 1 minus yi. So now this, this function right here is known as a Bernoulli, Bernoulli uh, distribution. And this is nice for a binary problem like this. You see we have two classes. In the case where uh, yi is 1, so my class is a cat, this term remains, and this term is 1 minus 0, so this becomes 0, this becomes 1, so I get hx, so that's the probability that I have a cat. And then if yi was uh, 0, this term becomes 1, and then this term remains, and I have the probability that it's not a cat or a dog. Uh, now, what we're going to discuss here is only for a binary classification problem to show the essence of logistic regression, but it can be expanded to multi-class classification problems. Okay, so now that I have the probability function, this tells me how plausible that my dependent variable is equal to a certain class given an input with a model parametrized by theta. Right? So if I combine all my observations into a large matrix X and a large matrix, uh, a large vector Y, like if I stack them all on top of each other, I can write the probability of, uh, this is Y, capital Y given capital X parametrized by theta equal to the multiplication from I equals to M, where M is all of the data points that I have, the number of data points, of my hypothesis to the power of i 1 minus my hypothesis to the power of 1 minus yi. And this whole function right here is typically referred to as my likelihood of theta. So what this represents is how plausible my model is, theta, the parameters that I have, given all of my data points. And the reason why I'm able to multiply them all together here is because I'm assuming that my data points are independent. So the, if, the, if the data points are independent, I can multiply out all their probabilities and I get the likelihood function. And that is a reasonable assumption since if I have a picture of a dog or a cat, they're not really related. Even if I have multiple pictures of dogs, they're not dependent. It doesn't matter what camera you took it with. It doesn't matter if you took it with a cell phone. It doesn't matter if it's the same dog. All that matters is that's an image of a dog or an image of a cat. And I'm trying to find a model that allows me to predict, given a new image, if that's a cat or a dog. So this likelihood function is what's going to allow us to find these theta parameters. So now that we have our likelihood function, which represent the pl plausibility of a model theta parameters, given all the data sets, the data set data points that I have, and I know that my hypothesis uses a sigmoid function, how do I find my model parameters? How do I find the thetas? Well, the way to do that is to maximize my likelihood function, right? L of theta. And that's not easy to do when I have multi multiplication of probabilities. So one way to deal with this is to use the log likelihood. So if I take the log of this likelihood function, I'm going to write it as you know, script L of theta, so the log likelihood. If I take the log, the nice thing is this multiplication becomes a sum. And that's a nice property of the log. And then I have this exponent becomes a multiplier. Uh, times the log of the hypothesis, which is sigma, sigma of theta transpose xi bar, this is bar, right? And then I have plus, because the multiplication becomes a sum, this exponent becomes a multiplier, and multiplied by 1 minus sigma of theta transpose xi. So this is my log likelihood. So I need to maximize, in this case, my log likelihood. And this is nice, because to maximize a function, I can take the derivative and move in the, in the direction of the gradient. So I can do gradient ascent. In our last video, we, in linear regression, we talked about gradient descent because we wanted to minimize a function. In this case, we want to maximize the likelihood or the log likelihood. The reason for that is, since the likelihood represents the plausibility of my model, if I maximize it, intuitively that means that that's the most plausible model that I can use to represent this data. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So if we looked at 
one data point. So I'm going to drop the i subscripts and the sum because they're not affected by the derivative. And if I'm going to take the partial derivative of this log likelihood as a function of theta with respect to theta, what do I get? My y, derivative of that is 0, so I don't care about that, so I keep the y. And then the derivative of a log is 1 over whatever is inside the log, and let's say sigma transpose, sigma of theta transpose x bar. Uh, and then uh, I have the derivative of this term, whatever is inside the log. So the derivative of sigma theta transpose x bar divided by derivative of theta. And then I have plus, the other term is going to be uh, 1 minus y. can't take the derivative of that. There's no theta in there. Drop the i. And then I have, oh, there is a log here. I'm sorry. This is log of this value, right? Because there's a log here. There should be a log here because I have a log expanded on all this whole function. So the derivative of a log is 1 over whatever's inside that log, which is in this case 1 minus sigma of theta transpose x bar. And then I multiply with uh, the derivative of this term uh, with respect to theta. So this one derivative is zero, goes away. So I have a negative sign. So dot product negative sign of this derivative. So the partial of sigma theta transpose x bar with respect to theta. So you can see here, I have this term and this term shared. And this is essentially the derivative of the sigmoid uh, with respect to theta. Uh, so the sigmoid have a, has a theta transpose times x, right? So I can write uh, the derivative of sigma theta transpose of x by theta as the derivative of sigma theta transpose x by the derivative of uh, theta transpose x multiplied by the derivative of theta transpose x divided by the derivative of theta. In this case, this value is basically, sorry, these are all x bars. This value is x bar, and this value is the derivative of a sigmoid, and this is where the mathematical convenience of a sigmoid comes into play, because uh, the derivative of a sigmoid function with respect to its input is essentially the sigmoid itself multiplied by 1 minus the sigmoid itself. And that's very mathematically convenient. So you can go and you can prove that uh, to yourself. But this is, this is the actual derivative of the sigmoid. So in this case here, I know that this term is that, and then this term is x bar, and this is shared with each other. So if you multiply out, um, you essentially can get, you can show that if I substitute this derivative here times x bar, same thing here, and I multiply everything out, um, then you can get uh, y minus h of x, uh, multiplied by x bar, right? This is what you get. So y itself minus sigma of theta transpose x bar times x bar. So this is my derivative of the log likelihood of theta with respect to theta. And this equation is what I would use for a gradient ascent to compute my values iteratively of theta until I converge. But this is again gradient ascent, so I have a positive value. Alpha times partial log likelihood with respect to theta. And this alpha is our scaling parameter, our step size, um, and this is the derivative itself. So there you have it. This is the um, maximum log likelihood approach to finding the parameter models theta that maximize the likelihood of my uh, distribution so that I can have a model that allows me to predict the probability of a categorically dependent variable or categorical dependent variable given an input x of an independent variable. So to sum up, Logistic regression is a statistical model that allows us to predict the probability that an input belongs to a certain category. And I do that by finding a model that maximizes the log likelihood of this distribution that I found right here.
And this all essentially is the theory for a binary logistic regression, which means I have two classes, but this can be easily generalized for multi-class logistic regression. I just wanted to go through some of the math here. I skipped, I skipped a few steps here because I ran out of space, but you can go ahead and prove to yourself uh, given that all these equations and the, and the pr properties of the sigmoid function, that you can arrive at this equation, and then that would be used in your gradient ascent algorithm to find the parameters theta that best or most likely fit the model. If you like this video on logistic regression, hit that thumbs up button. And think about subscribing to Endless Engineering if you like our videos and would like to see some more. Also, maybe hit that notification bell, that way YouTube will notify you every time we have a new video. Thank you for watching.